Read the Bible every day so you'll be full of faith. Welcome you to join Bible Race to read the entire Bible in two years. I believe God will bless you, He will lift you up, and your life will never be the same. The Book of 1 Samuel Chapter 21 David and the Holy Bread then David came to Nob to Ahimelech the priest, and Ahimelech came to meet David trembling and said to him, Why are you alone and no one with you? And David said to Ahimelech the priest, The king has charged me with a matter and said to me, Let no one know anything of the matter about which I send you and with which I have charged you. I have made an appointment with the young men for such and such a place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever is here. And the priest answered David, I have no common bread on hand, but there is holy bread if the young men have kept themselves from women. And David answered the priest, Truly women have been kept from us as always when I go on an expedition. The vessels of the young men are holy even when it is an ordinary journey. How much more today will their vessels be holy? So the priest gave him the holy bread, for there was no bread there but the bread of the presence, which is removed from before the Lord to be replaced by hot bread on the day it is taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. His name was Doeg the Edomite, the chief of Saul's herdsmen. Then David said to Ahimelech, Then have you not here a spear or a sword at hand? For I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you struck down in the valley of Ella, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you will take that, take it, for there is none but that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. David flees to Gath. And David rose and fled that day from Saul and went to Achish the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David the king of the land? Did they not sing to one another of him in dances? Saul had struck down his thousands and David his ten thousands? And David took these words to heart and was much afraid of Achish the king of Gath. So he changed his behavior before them and pretended to be insane in their hands and made marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle run down his beard. Then Akish said to his servants, Behold, you see that the man is mad. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I lack madmen that you have brought this fellow to behave as a madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? The Book of 1 Samuel, Chapter 22 David at the Cave of Adullam David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down to him. And everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was bitter and soul gathered to him. And he became commander over them. And there were with him about 400 men. And David went from there to Mitzpah of Moab. And he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and my mother stay with you till I know what God will do for me. And he left them with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. Then the prophet Gad said to David, Do not remain in the stronghold, depart and go to the land of Judah. So David departed and went into the forest of Hareph. Saul kills the priest at Nob. Now Saul heard that David was discovered and the men who were with him. Saul was sitting at Gabeah under, under the tamarisk tree on the height with his spear in his hand and all his servants were standing about him. And Saul said to his servants who stood about him, Hear now, people of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds that all of you have conspired against me? No one discloses to me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. None of you is sorry for me or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie and wait as at this day. Then answered Doeg the, the Edomite who stood by the servants of Saul, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob to Ahimelech the son of Ahitub, and he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him provisions and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent to summon Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests who were at Nob, and all of them came to the king. And Saul said, Here now, son of Ahitub. And he said, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, and that you have given him bread and a sword and have inquired of God for him, so that he has risen against me to lie and wait as at this day? Then Ahimelech said to the king, And who among all your servants is so faithful as David, who is the king's son-in-law and captain over your bodyguard and honored in your house? Is today the first time that I have inquired of God for him? No, let not the king impute anything to his servant or to all the house of my father, for your servant has known nothing of all this, much or little. And the king said, You shall surely die, Himelech, you and all your father's house. And the king said to the guard who stood about him, Turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David. And they knew that he fled and did not disclose it to me. 
But the servants of the king would not put out their hand to strike the priest of the Lord. Then the king said to Doeg, You turn and strike the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned and struck down the priest, and he killed on that day eighty-five persons who wore the linen ephod. And Nob the city of the priest he put to the sword, both man and woman, child and infant, ox, donkey, and sheep he put to the sword. But one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar told David that Saul had killed the priest of the Lord. And David said to Abiathar, I knew on that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of your father's house. Stay with me. Do not be afraid, for he who seeks my life seeks your life. With me you shall be in safe keeping. Amen. The following is the English translation of Pastor Martinez' teachings on the first book of Samuel, chapters 21 and 22, translated by David. Read the Bible every day and you'll be full of faith. Today we're going to look at first Samuel, chapters 21 and 22. In the coming chapters that we will see David struggle with fear because for the next few years he will be on the run. Chapter 21 and 22 describe David's flight from Nob to Gath and then to the cave of Adullam, followed by his escape to the stronghold in Moab, and finally to the forest of Herez. In the forest of Herez, back in the land of Judah, near the cave of Adullam, during this period, David's, David's life indirectly caused the death of 85 priests from Nob. So in 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 1 to 9, David went to Mahimelech, the, the priest in Nob, which was within the territory of Benjamin. Mahimelech was the great grandson of Elah. After, Sh- after Shiloh was destroyed, the tabernacles was likely moved to Nob. Though the Ark of the Covenants was not there, it remained in the Kiris Jerun. In verse 1, Mahimelech asked David why he came alone and without anyone accompanying him. In verse 2, you see that David's first lie out of fear. He claimed that the king has commissioned him for a secret mission that he was not to disclose to anyone, in part that he was on a covert assignment. David then asked Ahimelech for bread. And in verse 6, and after the priest gave him the consecrated bread known as the showbread, which was placed before the Lord in consists of 12 loaves and representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Now the showbread was normally reserved for a priest to eat, so Ahimelech broke the nor by giving it to David and his men. In 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 7, he tells an important figure appears, Doeg the Amdamite. In Bible, the, the Amdamites, Amalekites, and Agakites often represent the flesh or carnal nature, opposing God's will. So after a penny bread, David asked Ahimelech if he had any spears, or swords, weapon, as David needed weapon for his escape. Ahimelech gave him the Goliath's sword, which is somewhat ironic since Goliath's sword didn't save Goliath, and God enabled David to kill Goliath with a sling of five stones. So, perhaps God was indirectly reminding David to rely on him, as he did before, rather than on a weapon for self-defense. In 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 to 15, the scribe David's fear becomes evident. He fled from Saul and went to Achish, in the king of Gath. It is significant because Goliath was from Gath. And now David, having killed Goliath and carrying his sword, sought refuge there to escape Saul. David thought that Saul wouldn't pursue him in Gath, Gath in Saul's enemy's territory. However, in verse 11, you see, Akish's servant recognized David and reminded Akish that David was celebrated in Israel for calling tens of thousands, including Goliath. Fearing for his life, David pretended to be insane and prompting Akish to dismiss him, saying that he didn't need a madman around. So I believe that Akish letting David go was due to God's intervention. That this passage shows that David's clever plans were spoiled by God's orchestrations. God allowed Achish's servants to recognize David, disrupting his plan and forcing him to leave Gath. Through this, God was teaching David that he didn't need to seek protection among foreigners. God was his true protector. Now, this passage searches as a reminder of God often uses people in circumstances around us to, to throw our plan and to reveal our reliance on our own cunning that we are then compelled to confront our fears and weaknesses honestly. So God sometimes uses our environment or the people around us, like a kid's servant, and expose our schemes and force us to face our true fears 
and weaknesses. So this is God's way of pushing us back into his presence. David wrote Psalm 34 and 56 while at Gath. From these Psalms that we see that David learned his lessons from his failures. In Psalm 54, in, in Psalm 56, 4, he says that in God, whose word that I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can flesh, meaning mere mortals, do to me? In verse 9, he calls out, Then my enemies will turn back in the days when I call. This I know that God is for me. So he knew clearly that was God who led him safely out of gas. And these hardships taught David that only God could deliver him from his enemies and that he needed to fear the Lord alone. In Psalm 34, he speaks of teaching the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your tongues from speaking deceit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, David escaped to the cave of Adolin. And in verse 2, it is noted that everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in doubt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him. And he became the commander over them. And they were with him about 400 men. It is difficult to escape with such a large group, especially one filled with people in need. But David showed the heart of God. He didn't turn them away. Even though he himself was in danger, these 400 men followed David and wanted to see how he worshipped God and experienced God's help. And their lives were transformed. Eventually, they became David's mighty warriors. David rolled in Psalm 57 in the cave, calling out to God, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul take refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge, till the storm of destruction pass by. In verse 7, he declares, My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. If this heart have not wavered, that he would need to pray for steadfastness. He was speaking to his own heart, reminding himself to remain firm and to praise God. Now, despite being pursued, homeless, and forced to feign madness, that he said in verse 9 and 10, that I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to heavens, your faithful, your faithfulness to the clouds. So he did not complain about God, or his circumstances. Instead, in his most difficult moment, he deeply experienced God's salvation, love, and faithfulness, prompting him to praise God's faithfulness that reaches to the skies. So these hardship in the caves of Adullam were used by God to train David to rely completely on him. And in verse 5, you see David fled to the stronghold to Moab, and he chose Moab because his great-grandfather Boaz had married Ruth. And Moab is this, Sending his family to Moab was partly due to the, kin the kinship and partly because Moab was also an enemy of Saul. But then the prophet Gad told David to leave Moab and to go to the land of Judah. Returning to Judah was challenging because he was Saul's territory and Saul was determined to kill him, searching for him with his 3,000 elite troops. As we continue reading, we see Saul becoming increasingly desperate to kill David to the point of suspecting his own servants and blaming them for not helping him to capture David. In 1 Samuel chapter 22 from verses 10 to 17, Doeg the Edomite reported to Saul that David had been with Ahimelech at Nob, and Ahimelech had given David food and Goliath's sword. Saul summoned all the priests of Nob and questioned them in verse 13, accusing them of conspiring with David and giving him food and the sword and inquiring of David for, for him so that he could rise up against Saul. So Ahimelech was bewildered by these accusations. In verse 16, you see that Saul declared to Ahimelech that his entire family were to be put to death, that he ordered his guards to kill the priests of the Lord, but they refused, knowing he will be an offense against God. Saul then ordered Doeg, the Edomite, to kill the priest. As a foreigner in someone who already had issues with Israel, Doeg complied, killing 85 priests who wore the linen ephod. And 
does act fulfill God's judgments on the house of Eli. So in 1 Samuel chapter 22, from verses 20 to 23, one of the priests, Abimethal, escaped and fled to David, and bringing the ephod with him. David recognized that his deceit had indirectly caused the death of Ahimelech and the other priest, admitted to his soul to Abimethal, and he told Abimethal that to stay with him and not to be afraid. And those who saw Abimethal's life also saw David's life, and that he will be saved with him. So Abimethal remi- remained royal to David throughout his life, serving him faithfully. Despite the massacres and tragedy, God continued to work. Abimethal, the sole survivor, joined David, bringing the ephod. From that day, all the priests left cell to follow David, allowing David to always inquire of God. So David's light had indirectly caused the slaughter of the priests at Nob, but it also resulted in God's priests aligning with David. David wrote in Psalm 52, in which he mentions the deceitful tongue on one hand that he hung Dame's doic. In the other hand, he realized that his own tongue also needs cleansing by God. Looking back at David's experience, we see that his life is not one of the continuous victory. He often succumbed to fear, and made foolish decisions, and then overcame his fear and made the right choices. His life was far from perfect and didn't follow the traditional heroic narrative. This is a true reflection of a Christian's growth journey, from which we can learn a lot. So, all the difficulties, crises, and conflicts that we face reveal our true selves. How we react determines whether we became better and stronger or weaker. Saul, in the end, was even possessed by an evil spirit because he avoided confronting his inner weaknesses, especially his fear of people, which led him to repeatedly disobey God. When David's weaknesses were exposed, he acknowledged them openly, turned wholeheartedly to God, and continued to seek and praise Him. And through all these hardships, God shaped a better David. Dear family, God was preparing David to be a king. And I believe he's also preparing us to reign with him. That the cave of Lebedolin was David's training center. Similarly, God designs a unique training center for each of us. David set an example for us. Despite his fear, persecution, betrayal, and anger, he spent most of his time praising and relying God during his escape. I want to share with you Psalm 52 verses 8 and 9, written by David after the massacre of the priests at Nob. At a time when he felt anger towards the betrayer, killed over the priest's death in the fear of being pursued. Amid these conflicting emotions, he wrote, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because you have done it. I will wait for your name for it is good in the presence of the godly. Amen. Yes, God's name is good. Dear Bible Race viewers and families in Christ, thank you for watching our videos. We hope our sharing can enrich your life. If you find the content helpful, we hope you will support our ministry so we may continue to produce high quality videos to serve the kingdom of God and hope to bless more people's lives. You can donate in the following ways. Online giving by PayPal. If you are residing in Taiwan, you may also donate by bank transfer. Thanks again for your viewing and support. Every contribution is our greatest encouragement. We sincerely appreciate your support. May God bless you abundantly. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Dear families, we hope that you enjoy the Bible race as much as we do. If you are willing to volunteer to translate the original Chinese teaching into English or assist with video editing, please email service at 360sunrise.com. Thank you.